Thanks for checking out this video on how to modify the Vivitar 283 into an adjustable variable output flash. This video runs just over 18 minutes. I made a shorter video that covers the same modification but at a faster pace in a shorter time. To watch that video just search for its title which is the same as this video with the word short replacing the word long. Here's the Vivitar 283 on my workbench and notice the thigh wrister in the front of it. That comes out. You basically just pull it straight out and there's a close-up of it, the Vivitar 283. Good flash, good solid flash. So here I'm about to take the thigh wrister out. As you, as you can see there's a little bit of resistance but if you get your fingers on both sides and pull up it comes out pretty easily. It's kind of firm but it comes out nicely if you pull it straight up and there you can see the four pins which go down into the flash body and you can see the one screw to the right of that collar there's one on the left side of it as well I'll be taking both of those out there's the flash with the thigh wrister removed and there's my set of uh, small screwdrivers there's a nice close-up of the front of the flash without the thigh wrister and there's a good look at the bottom of the thigh wrister there's the two screws I was talking about and I'll take those out here in just one sec the thigh wrister is composed of three parts I, what you're looking at is the bottom piece then there's a middle piece and then the top is what you're looking at when it's attached to the flash the top has that photo cell in it okay here's a potentiometer I got from Radio Shack it's a 100k linear taper potentiometer and the only two leads you're going to use is the middle lead and one of the sides. The two wires you're going to see here in just a minute, you're going to attach one of them to the center and one to one of the sides. And it doesn't matter which one. It does matter in the fact that as you turn the potentiometer, you'll turn up your flash or turn it down. So if you want to experiment with it as you attach the wires to see which way you want it. The way I attached mine, I kind of got it backwards but you know it really doesn't matter as long as you know which way is which okay I'm gonna take those two screws out of the bottom of the thigh wrister here and I'm selecting my Phillips screwdriver and there's the two screws on the very bottom they come out real easy and just a heads up as I was messing with it in the days that followed um, I actually pulled the um, the middle part of the thigh wrister away from the bottom so those threads um, are not really really strong so be real careful with them and I have a note to um, make later about using the middle part of the thigh wrister all right there the bottom part is loose and there are the two wires now the bottom of the thigh wrister in my right hand you'll see there's four leads two leads are just dummied together or uh, jumped or bridged whatever and then the two that the red and black wire are attached to there's a capacitor between them and you'll be using those two leads the red wire to the middle black to the edge or black to the middle and red to the edge of the potentiometer okay here's a nice close-up of the bottom part of the thigh wrister the two leads on the top are jumped together they're just bent over and soldered and the two bottom leads the way that that that's oriented on my workbench there you can see the red wire and the black wire now I go ahead and replace those with some speaker wire that I had sitting around some solid core speaker wire it's just a little bit thicker gauge than those than the red and black you see there the red and black wire that come with it are super thin and they're real hard to work with and I knew there, that there was no way that I was going to be able to um, solder those onto the pot now right in the middle of the, the thyristor there you saw that center screw next I'm going to take that out and it's pretty much the same screwdriver I use I mean it's a, it's the same screwdriver it's pretty much the same screw and then this will detach it from the the middle from the top piece now I end up using that middle piece right there that's in my left hand you don't really need to depending on how you want to construct the box or whatever holds your potentiometer you really don't need to use that middle part I do and you'll see later okay now it's time to cut those wires and honestly you can pretty much just grab them pull and wiggle and they come off they're really really thin 
And I'm trying to be very, very delicate, and they come off so easily. And I could have easily just cut them off the bottom part of the thigh wrister since I was going to replace those wires anyway. But at this time, I didn't know that that's what I was going to do. And if you take a good look at those wires, they are really thin. I, I don't even think I could have even stripped them. And that's basically how they go onto the pot. One way or the other, it doesn't really matter. And you can use either side. See, I'm, I'm putting them up against the pot in several different orientations. Here you can see the bottom part of the thigh wrister where I have already cut the new wires, stripped the ends, and then attached them to the two leads where the capacitor is jumped across. And they're just about, I don't know, maybe just an inch and a half long. Not very long. And I pre-stripped the ends. Now those two ends you see sticking up, those are going to go on the potentiometer. Now here's the part where I put the the wire up through the hole of the middle part of the thigh wrister and then I screw it back down to the bottom. I did see another picture tutorial where a guy mounted the potentiometer onto the top of the middle part because you have that nice flat spot and I think that's why I went ahead and used it but you know it, it doesn't matter if you use it or not you can still do it the way I did it. Okay, there's the wires going through it. And I show the bottom. I'm using one hand to record and one hand to work. Okay, now I've put it back together and put the two screws in. And there you go. It's shaping up. See, there's the collar with the four pins and the two leads extended. All right, now it's time to do a little soldering. I am using a tripod here, a small tabletop tripod. And it's quick and easy. I do the first lead. And that's it, the first and second. Now at this point, you could actually be done. Because right here I stick it into the flash body. And it's really set to go. I do a few test shots here in just a minute. The rest of the project from here out is really just clean up and making it pretty and stabilizing the pot and mounting it onto um, a small box that I make. That's it. I've got the flash set up on my desk with the radio receiver. And the pot is sticking out the front side so you can't see it. I'm just shooting it off into a storage area next to my office. There goes one shot. And then I'm going to reach in here and adjust the pot just a tiny little bit. I'm using two hands because I'm stabilizing the pot with one hand and turning it with the other. And I mean just a barely any movement at all. And I think I pop off another shot here. There's really not much to see. You just see a flash. You can't tell much from the backside there. But when you look at the pictures, they are quite a bit different. Here's what I use to make the box that holds the potentiometer. It's just some clear acrylic. It's from a it's a picture frame I got at Hobby Lobby. It was really cheap, and that's about the thickness I was looking for. Okay, I'm getting ready to cut the excess stem off of the pot. I've already made a mark. I got it jawed up in my vise. And I've already made the mark. And there's the knob that I'm going to put on there eventually. Once again, got it from Radio Shack. And there's the bottom size. It has a nice brass or a, yeah, brass insert with a set screw. I'm just using a small hacksaw. You've probably seen these jobs in the hardware store. They're really, really inexpensive. And there is the cut. And I think I went ahead and sanded that already before I shot this little bit of footage. You don't really have to. Okay, now I gotta stop here for a second. Okay, I don't show cutting the, the uh, cutting the acrylic into rectangular pieces. It took a little bit of uh, forethought and some planning and a little bit of uh, drawing, but I, I made careful measurements to see how big I would have to make that little box on each side to contain the potentiometer. And 
the height as well off the face of the flash body. I don't have those uh, those measurements, but if you just give it a few minutes, it's really not that hard to figure out. And there's many different ways to uh, accomplish this project. Once you see the finished product, you will you'll kind of understand how I did it. I got all the pieces, and I just uh, used some JB Weld and glued them together and let them set up overnight. And the next day, I put on the other two sides and. It all turned out just fine. Then I drilled a hole for the pot in about the right place where it needed to be and a small hole for the um, the anchoring stem that's on there. And then I just glued it to the body of the flash and it all worked out really nice. Now here's a two squirts of JB Weld that I'm going to use. You don't need a whole lot because I'm only going to put glue on that little black um, box on uh, two sides along two edges as I glue it to the body of the flash. JB Weld is awesome stuff. If, if you put on anything that's uh, uh, smooth, all you have to do is rough it up a little bit. See, there's the bead of JB Weld glue. See there, and on the top side, the lighting's not too good. I did not put it on the sides, the left and right, more of like, I'd say, the top and bottom. And to set it in place while it cured or set up or dried I used some black duct tape that's actually Gorilla Tape and if you don't own some you need to get some it's extremely strong and this is already set up for 24 hours and I'm taking it off and as you get a good shot of it you'll be able to tell how I made it it's basically a rectangular box with five sides and the fifth open side is uh, as you can see, glued to the front of the flash body. I've seen some other projects, uh, pictures of other projects and um, hacks for the 283, and some are really slick. Um, there's a small project box that somebody got from a electronics store, and it looks really nice, but when I went to Radio Shack, they didn't have any project boxes small enough for my needs. And there it is, without the... Uh, Without the template on the top with the gradations and the and the uh, knob, it's finished. All right, here I'm going to set the knob on the stem and put the set screw in. I'm turning the knob all the way to the left. And if you're looking at a clock face, it basically turns from 7 to 5. There it is in the 7 o'clock position, so to speak. And it turns all the way around to about the 5, approximately. There it's sitting about 8 to 5, or 8 to 6, whatever. But when I'm all done with it, you'll see it's pretty much 7 to 5. Here's a close-up of the JB Weld epoxy glue. I didn't repaint it or sand it down. And there's the top side. looks a little unprofessional <laughs> and there's where I did not put the epoxy on the side nor the other side the opposite of that and what you're looking at is completed without the uh, white piece of paper I put on later with the gradations which turned out to be from 1 to 17 kind of an odd scale and here's a finished product I put that piece of paper on there and I had to cut the center hole out, and as you can see the bottom, there's a slice up the middle so I could get around. And what I did was I put, I made the one mark at the beginning and another mark at the end. And the nine is in between. And then the four and 14 are between those two marks, and so on and so forth. I just kept making marks in the middle. Now here's a note to uh, be aware of. 17 in the position is at right now that is the darkest and to get the flash to go in a smooth incremental steps it actually goes like 17 16 and 3 quarters 16 and a half 16 and a quarter 16 15 and a half 15 and a quarter 15 there's a lot of there's a lot of change from 17 down to 15 and then there's not as much change from say 15 or 14 all the way down to one there are some now I put the test shots here coming up pretty soon 
and you'll be able to see those. But most of your changes are between 17 and 15. It must just be the way that the uh, potentiometer varies the voltage to the flash. Okay, here you can see I got my camera up on the tripod with the radio transmitter on top of it. And if you look real close, you can see the blinking orange light of the flash. I think I just set off the first shot, which would be... Oh, I'm not really quite sure. I think at 17. And there's 16. And I'm being very careful to set the knob to each gradation that I marked on the paper. And then after I looked at the uh, photos from these test shots, then I could tell that the it quickly changes uh, from really dark, barely any flash at all, to quite a bit in just a short time on the uh, low side of the flash range, or the adjustment knob range. Well, this is what it looks like for a little while, so let's just go ahead and jump to the um, test shots, and we'll talk about those. Here's the control with no flash. Here it is at set at 17. As you can see, there is a difference. Very low flash. Here's 16. You almost couldn't see that. Now here's a big jump down to 15. Look at that. That's a that's quite a bit. And 14's coming up right here. Once again, not much change, but you'll be able to see 13. A little bit of change there. And over the next few, there's really not much. There's 12. Setting 11 is coming up. There's 11. And here comes 10. And they just go like this. And here comes 9. Now I'm going to just stop on 9. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to all of them with numbers and more of a... And, uh, showing them a lot more rapidly so you can see the, the all, all 17 shots, the full range of the... Um, of the uh, dial on the front of the flash and I'll run through it like a good two or three times so you can see how that plays out. All right well that completes this uh, tutorial I guess you might call it of this uh, 283 hack to make it a variable output flash um, the only thing I can say in summation is I probably would have uh, put the outside lead to the other side of the potentiometer so that I have the darkest um, flash to the lower number. It's kind of opposite, but as long as you know what it is, you'll know how to deal with it. And I would not have used the middle part of the thigh wrister to put those leads up through the middle. It really didn't matter though, in, in the long run. But I could have easily done it without that. Just the bottom part of the thigh wrister and the pot inside that little black box glued to the front with a knob and a gradation range, and you're set to go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. I hope this all made a lot of sense. Hit me with any questions at uh, Joe Cubicle right here on um, YouTube, and I will answer those questions if anyone has any. Thank you very much. Talk to you later.